moonlight pours through the broad skylights above the Kepler High School pool and onto the back of Calvin Owens, captain of the Kepler High swim team. He cuts quiet laps through the water, training vigorously for the Pocahontas County swim meet just four days away. A window over the stacked up bleachers is propped open by a duffel bag containing a change of clothes, evidence of Calvin's trespassing in pursuit of a few dozen more practice laps. He breaches the surface and clings to the edge of the pool panting. He reaches up with trembling, tired fingers and peels off his goggles and cap, then lays his head down on crossed arms, attempting to catch his breath before pushing his luck for one last set. And for a moment, he is surrounded with silence, floating in the waters that would be his proving grounds in just a few short days. He pushes his nerves aside, and granting himself a moment of weightless serenity, Calvin Owens exhales a long, contented sigh. And then he is pulled violently below the surface of the water. And now the silence of the gym is nearly absolute. There's just the soft rustling of the pine trees outside and the small ripples that remain on the surface of the pool, which lap lazily against its edges. And then a splash as Calvin resurfaces, gulping air into his burning lungs as he lunges toward the ladder out of the pool. He leaps onto the edge and scrambles up the side of the bleachers, his body aching with exhaustion, and yanks his bag out of the propped open window, swinging his leg over its sill. But before he makes his escape, his curiosity consumes him. He pauses and surveys the waters below. His mind cannot comprehend what it sees. The surface of the water grows convex, lurching upward from the center of the pool and pulling away from its perimeter. It grows slowly like this until it forms a mound that reaches 10 feet above its former surface. And then, without warning, this shape begins moving in Calvin's direction. The window slams shut as Calvin springs outside. He hits the ground running and vanishes into the trees that surround his school. The nearly full moon over Kepler, West Virginia illuminates this scene from its ambivalent place in the twilight sky. sucked into a portal i'm f- going all the way from west virginia to oh west virginia I'm, yeah oh man Stone i'm being sucked too i'm going to west virginia too <laughs> we're both being sucked we're being sucked. Dad, are you being sucked no yeah. i'm and i wouldn't admit it if i was and i'm the well. portal the portal master who made the <laughs> suck <laughs> um Griffin, why did you transport me to the state i'm already well, technically you're 45 minutes east or so of where you are. So that's exotic. There's all those warrants too, Juice. You can't really cross state lines. Yeah. And now you're in pepperoni roll country, baby. Ooh. Um, wow, this, this is pepperoni roll country right here. Sure. The official I'm, snack. I'm there. I'm living it. <laughs> um, so it's Max Fun Drive, and it's our first episode kind of back in Amnesty. What we, is, we officially know now is season two. And, hey, who here remembers what Amnesty was all about? Because it's been three months? Two, I think two it months? was all about a young woman named Aubrey Little. And her and journey was, and two yeah. sort of side characters, sort of ancillary characters yes, supporting her. there to her make her, her look quest. good. Sure. And also, here's a really fun thing, because um, you often see this, like, w- when you go from pilot to season... I can't remember what Aubrey's voice sounded like, so it's going to be like completely different now, probably. Um, also, because you're sick, it's going to now Travis oh, yeah. has this, the episode one sickness. Um, would you all like a quick refresher on what this is all about, and then we can talk about what the Max Fun Drive is, and then start doing the episode? Yes, I agree. Uh, 
you all are in Kepler, West Virginia. It's the setting for this story uh, where uh, all of you have kind of been collected. Ned, you lived in town already. You run a a sort of local cryptid museum called the Cryptonomica. And Duck, you've lived here for... Has Duck lived here his whole life? So, yeah, I think so. So far. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so Ned works uh, Ned works at the Cryptonomica. Duck works at the Monongahela National Forest. As and we're buddies. Ranger. We're friends. And you're buddies? Well, you're all friends now, I think, or at least a casual acquaintances. No, apparently, uh, I'm a, apparently I'm a sidekick to Aubrey. That's I was goofing. Come on. You're all important in God's <laughs> eyes. Um, and Aubrey, you are a traveling sort of uh, s- s- sort of magician starting her career who was brought to Kepler when she developed actual magic powers. And you That's the up. twist, right? Because before now, she was doing stage magic. But then what's that? Actual magic? No one's ever done that before in a story. Y'all welcome. Actual practical magic. Um, yeah. So you all were, uh, you all sort of came to know Mama, who is the proprietor of the Amnesty Lodge. It's actually just Amnesty Lodge. I need to stop saying the Amnesty Lodge. That's like calling it like the Motel Six. That's weird, right? right? Wait, um, is the Amnesty a Lodge mo- a chain? Are there other Amnesty Lodges around? No, there's just this one, and it is, uh, it plays home to a number of, uh, well, monsters who hail from a world called Sylvain, which is we accessible. We still need to come up with a better word than like abominations and monsters. Alternative beings. Alternative. Th- I thought we had well, bomb bombs. No, bomb bombs. I, bomb it's bombs all got terrible. put it down. Uh, which uh, Sylvain is accessible through a stone archway, which is in the middle of the woods. And every two months or so, when the full moon, uh, around the time of the full moon, these big nasty monsters called Abominations come out. And it's up to the Pine Guard to defeat them quietly uh, because nobody else can know about Sylvain's existence because what would happen if you found out there was a world full of monsters that was connected to our own? There would be chaos. I would feel very um, satisfied, very vindicated. Sure, there would certainly be people like that, but um, the reason for the the secrecy that the Pine Guard operates under is because they are worried about, you know, war. Um, And so y'all slayed a monster, slayed an abomination, and won the day, and Mama uh, sort of disappeared on some sort of secret mission. Uh, Duck sort of had a conversation with Minerva, who is his invisible friend. It's visible to him. He's she's visible to him, but to nobody else. Uh, and we learned that she's somewhere. She's exists somewhere. Um, mm-hmm. And in the last scene, Ned, you found out that Kirby posted the video of the real Bigfoot Barclay fighting a bobcat, which is a small cat. And I'm very sorry. I didn't know. I confused bobcat and mountain lion. It happens oh, to the best I knew of that us. the whole time, and I thought you were doing that on purpose. Like, it was a monster version yeah. of a podcast. I thought it was an okay, oversized. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Because Matter the of monster- fact, I, I think you would even call it a Robert cat. because it was A so Robert big- cat. The, the monster flu had gotten the bobcat turned into a monster. Okay. Um, any any questions before we hop How in? How long has it been since the... Uh, it's It's been two months. Uh, we're we're kind of getting to the next sort of monster cycle, which comes every two months or so. So we're going to do like a quick catch up scene with all of you and then uh, not go five episodes before getting you all together. I'm going to do that sort of after we do like a little catch up because I want to know what your characters have been doing in this place for, for the last two months. So what time um, of year is it? It's October. Uh, oh, spooky. Yeah, the spookiest month historically. Uh, let's let's talk about the Max Fun Drive, though, before we do the story. Well, because... so there are monsters in the world, and we need your support to stop those monsters. How do you do it? Right. You go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate, and then you become a member, and with your monthly pledges, we take that money, and we turn it into dead monsters. Yeah, we use yep. we have monster sword. Not the cool monsters. The cool monsters can hang. Um, if they're chill, if they're chill, and s- like some of them are, I saw a vampire the other day. He was um listening to um <clears throat> train on his car radio yeah. and just enjoying the air conditioner. I was like, yeah, you can hang, fine, uh, yeah. Heavily put, tinted windows, obviously. Heavily tinted windows, and I put my glaive away. Um, <laughs> we're, we're going to talk more about the Max Fun Drive, but let's get into it. Um, yeah, maximum. But fun. just go to maximumfund.org dot org forward slash donate right this second. Uh, let's start with Aubrey. Aubrey, 
Uh, when last we saw you, you were kind of banged up from the monster encounter. It's been two months. I imagine you have recovered since then. Um, and it's October now. And in the last two months, Mama has not returned uh, yet from whatever mission she embarked on. Uh, but with her sort of last letter, she implored you to stay at Amnesty Lodge and help them in their plight while you sort of discover the truth of your your magic powers. So I am curious to hear what Aubrey's been doing for the last two months. And then in there, maybe we can find like a scene that we can do. She's been quickly. binging Netflix, just uh, really taking some her time, not doing much. Watching Stranger Things for like strategic tips and stuff? No, mostly just like cooking shows and documentary. No, uh, she has been practicing. Zumbo's, Zumbo's just desserts. I'm, I'm pretty I, sure I, Zumbo is a cryptid because no human can make cakes like that. I picture, like, with Barclay's help, like, setting up, you know, kind of straw men, you know, and doing some, like, target practice, you know, flinging spells and trying to really control it and being able to do it without having, like, the spreading danger and really trying to find, like, where the the line is of the power and, like, how much she can rely on it. Okay. Uh, so just practicing your magic ability. Is it, did it, is it going well? Um, I would say it is passably well i here's another thing i don't know just like last time i want the characters to use the restroom i also don't want this to be like in doctor strange where it's like oh now i get it and now i'm super awesome at magic no yeah i think that's very i think that's probably how it would work right like yeah it's, a, she, it's not something you just like oh now i'm a master master magician i would also say that maybe in there she's been like learning about sylvain and she's been learning about uh the alternative um people the alternative beings in uh the lodge and so she's been maybe cozying up to to danny a little bit as a bit of like now tell me about them now what's going on here that all right we can do that we can do that scene um like i think that would be good i think you doing target practice is is would be cool too but i think that you just like having a conversation about sylvain and stuff might be good um so how about this you're um uh, you and Danny are in the woods, it, just just not too far from the lodge. I think it's probably in sight. Uh, there's a creek that runs runs along uh, behind the Amnesty Lodge. Behind Amnesty Lodge, damn it. Uh-huh. Um, and the two of you are out there just sort of hiking around. Uh, I think Danny's sort of been helping you get acclimated to, to Kepler, first and foremost. Like, you, this is a town that you have not lived in, and so you're sort of still trying to wrap your wrap your head around the the landscape and sort of what the town's all about. Um, And the two of you are looking for ramps. Do ramps exist in October? I think it's a springtime food. But because of the magic from the gateway. Oh, I thought you meant like sick, like bicycle ramps. We're going to skateboard off some ramps. No, like the tasty onions. Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's like an Appalachian delicacy. Okay. Okay, anyway. They have also ramp- be, there's a ramp festival every year. There's a ramp festival, but I think it's in spring, but because of the magic of the Stone Gate, they also grow in October. Could so, we also be looking for six skateboarding ramps? Yeah, I think you're looking for both. Um, okay. Do you know? Only if you have Jake Cool Ice with you. Um, I think Jake Cool Ice heard you were going out for looking for ramps, and he showed up with his shorts and his cool board. Oh, Jake. Um, and his knee pads and helmet, because he's safe. And then he, Danny was like, no, they're onions. Barclay wanted them for cooking. And he's like, oh, well, I can't grind on those. And he went back inside, and he cried in his room. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. You hate to hear that. Um, so the two of you are out in the woods looking for these stinky onions, um, and uh, you are talking to her about Sylvain. Um, so also, just a picture, I, I've been imagining this kind of like training exercise that's also become like a nervous fidget for her, where it's like a, a little flame on the tip of her index finger that she passes back and forth between index fingers. All right, I, I did that. Co- yeah, so kind of controlling so you doing? Are you doing that right now? Yeah. Okay, so what do you uh, what do you want to know from from Danny about Sylvain? Okay, so one more time, tell me again. You are a well, I'm I'm a I guess I'm Sylvan like a hundred percent. There's there's sort of different types of uh, uh, yeah, beings yeah, yeah. over yeah, there, but, but like a, a, a okay, yeah, vampire. I know I get what you're, see, those are your terms, and it's weird because you kind of oh. have those terms because we came over and you made them up but i guess um i i I mean i guess a lot of us would be vampires uh not in the way that not like the 
you know, Dracula type. Uh, uh-huh. I can't, I can't turn into bats. I can do some cool stuff, but like, um, yeah, vampire, uh, sharp, sharp teeth when I need them. And she, uh, what she have? I think she has a ring and she takes that off and you, you see her, like her Sylvan form where she has those sharp teeth and kind of orange, orange eyes. Not exactly like the two fanged vamp that, uh, we've, we kind of know about, but, um, she, she, she transforms in front of your eyes. She's like, yeah, so, Sick. uh, vampire. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, Okay, so uh, this is a weird question, but is there any way is there any way to recognize like without someone taking off their their accessory, say like, oh yeah, that's a Bigfoot, that's a vampire, that's a No, I mean that's why they exist. They help us sort of live here. I mean, don't yeah, you don't need like a Voight Kampf test on on this. It's pretty much just the folks living in Amnesty Lodge. I feel like a lot of people saw men in black and then just assumed that there were like aliens and monsters walking. No, it's pretty much just us it's it would be mm-hmm. tough to sort of it, it it's tough to survive in this world without a little bit of help and uh amnesty lodge sort of pr- provides that to us um so specifically so i think the most important thing you need to know if you're and i know you're curious about how the sylvans work but we can't really live without some sort of sustaining life force and over and like and, food well it 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 could be food. There's traces of, of that stuff in there, but uh, I, in in Sylvain, we all sort of um, sub, subsist on well, Sylvain itself on the on the planet. Um, and you eat the dirt? No, we don't eat the dirt. We just sort of absorb its its energy. Um, like I, photosynthesis. It, yeah, I guess if you want to frame it like that, it's a little bit like photosynthesis. And obviously, over here, we don't get that, and so I think that's why you get a lot of the. You know, vampire biting, feeding, that stuff that has happened sometimes and has been kind of unfortunate and has painted a pretty bad picture of uh, of me and how I sort of live. Um, so do you have to bounce over from time to time and, like, recharge and come back? She uh, she looks a little sad when you say that. She's like, I I can't go back, Aubrey. I'm in exile. We're, oh. we're, for, we're forbidden. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. You, I, I, yeah. Once you, once you leave, Sylvain, you're not really allowed to cross back over um but uh anyway no i uh the you know the springs behind amnesty lodge the the hot springs yeah those those have enough juice i think for a lot of us to keep going so quick soak in there and i'm i'm good to go so do you would you want to go take a soak in the springs i mean we don't if you don't i know we have to get the ramps so if you don't you know what never mind forget it um, she reaches down and grabs like uh, uh like there's two really close together, which is uh I don't know how ramps work, but I'm gonna say it's an uncommon occurrence. And she pulls them up. I think y'all have like a healthy bounty. She's like, no, that sounds great. Let's get these over to Barclay. Get him working on that. Whatever he's gonna make. These things stink like hell, but I'm sure he's gonna make <laughs> them taste very good. And uh, yeah, let's go for a dip. Sick. Um, duck. Yep. Duck, it's been two months um, since yes. since the events, since the last hunt. Um, what have you been up to? I think Minerva's still showing up on a fairly regular basis. I thought it might be interesting if um, through, like, I don't know, through the two of you just, like, figuring it out, um, if she managed to find a way to show up at, like, a regular time, like, you know, 6.14 p.m., sometime in the evening, and I can leave it to you to decide, but just, like, that's, that, now it's consistent. Now Minerva shows up, and you know what time she's gonna show up. It is not this, like, random visit thing. She, she now has a scheduled time. She shows she's up like, just in time to watch Wheel with you. Yeah, she's, she's dialed it in, she catches the back half a Wheel, and it's probably not for, like, a super long time, but, like, what, how do you feel about that? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Probably in the evening. I feel like I, you said six fourteen, kind of randomly, but I, I, I think that 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 feels right. Six fourteen, six fourteen every night. All right, I think Minerva shows up at six fourteen every night. Checks in. I think you. I mean, you still got Beacon, and that's that's what it is. And I think Duck has been like in. He he's still doing his day to day. I think he probably jogs places more often than he used to stroll. Like trying to sort of casually get a little bit more physically uh, fit. Um, I think maybe in the woods at once in a great while, he'll sort of like practice with Beacon 
um, you know, when he's sure no one is around to to look to sort of, you know, get knock the dust off a little bit, but it's not like his prime focus. Hey, he's got he's a still, he's got a fucking job. He's got a nine to five. Yeah. Has that been complicated by the fact that you uh, also kind of have started to embrace your destiny a little bit? Um, I think that he maybe has a sense of wanting to have things in order, you know, just in case, um, so like in case he were, ha- would have to abandon his post for some reason or God forbid something were to happen to him. I think that he, um, maybe appreciates it more because it, it is also like a sort of bedrock of normalcy, um, in 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 a, a world kind of gone crazy. How is your training? How is your training going? I think it would be cool if like you, I, I, Minerva. I think would be eager to train you. I think obviously. She, I think she only shows up for like three minutes. It is very. It is a short window that she appears to you, but it's every every day six fourteen to six seventeen. She shows up and I think wants to wants to sort of show you the ropes a little bit. Yeah, and I think I see Minerva kind of like like his personal trainer and who he's kind of like blowing off. Like the reason he does the stuff is so he can tell Minerva like, Oh yeah, I've been practicing like running and swords and stuff, you know, okay. but it's not, you know, it's, it's sort of like Minerva's there. She's like, you know, have you been training? He's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally, <laughs> totally training. Really? Yeah, for sure. Like really grinding, grinding it out all right um, turning I, I in think, all kinds of crush bone belts you know yeah get, god get how often rats. can we reference crush bone belts from as EverQuest often as i and, want dude okay um I, I i think i'd like the scene if you're cool with it to be at some point during this two month span she kind of stops taking the excuse of like yep training great uh and actually wants to like uh like spar with you somewhere um for her three minute window uh yeah and i feel like she probably kicks his ass like every time and and <clears throat> probably through that towards the end of this this period that we're talking about like he s- gets tired of getting his ass kicked which is co- sort of the prompting um for him doing the other stuff like for actually trying to get himself in slightly better shape and practice with beacon or whatever he's tired of getting knocked around well, she's a spec. She's like a vision. I don't think she has any physical form. Yeah, but, but he knows when he's B. Yeah, okay. I th- I think. Uh, all right, let's do one of these scenes. It's probably close to the end of this two month window because you've been you've been training for yes. a while. Where Where are you at? I also don't forget. I need to do my um, <clears throat> Destiny's plaything roll at some point. Oh yeah, go ahead and it. go ahead and do that. That's a good setup too. Um, because we're uh, especially because sure? if we're flashing back, it... okay. Um, yeah, I think yeah. Go ahead and go ahead and do it, and then we can... okay. Uh, for those of you, Destiny's at the beginning of every sort of like thing, I have to uh, uh, roll to see sort of like what Destiny is going to tell me about. It is a super cool mechanic. So we're using roll twenty, um, not for sort of visual things. We're not going to put up like uh, things that you won't be able to see. We're mainly just doing it so we can see each other's rolls. Um, and I can see that Justin has rolled a seven plus what is it? Weird. Yeah, plus weird, which is actually. Negative one. Oh, so for for ducks. So what do you six. what do you get on a failure for something bad is going to happen to you? <laughs> oh no! We just no. started. Here you go. Here's a little present for you, Griffin. I've I've wrapped it and everything. Okay, that's extremely good. Well, mark experience. Okay. Every time you fail a roll in uh, Monster of the Week, which is the game we are Crushing playing, is uh, you get mark experience. Out of curiosity, did anybody rack up five XP? I um, need no, to level up. I just got one last time. All right. Yeah, that's my second. Dad, I, I, where are you at XP wise? You know, you know, I got a, I got a, I got a couple. This is a much simpler system. This is such a simpler no system. Use. You gotta just do the shit. I'm looking. Though. I'm looking at all my notes. I'm looking at all my notes. I think I look at your character sheet. Two, two. Thank you. Well, we'll, we'll I'll do your vision after this scene. We'll do the flashback okay. and then we'll do your vision. Um, okay. So it's uh, where where are you at when you're doing this training? Uh, out back, I, the Outback uh, Steakhouse, <laughs> like the parking yeah, lot the or like the kitchen. There's a parking lot behind the Outback. No, I go out back of my house. Okay, uh, your apartment. The, yes, okay. my yes, my apartment. Uh, there's a sort of common area. Um, the uh, but there's only like three other apartments in the building, and I know when Mrs. Pearson usually packs it in at about 
uh, uh, earlier in the evening. Now, what's your relationship and, uh, with Mrs. Pearson? Yeah, let's dial into she, that. She is a, a sweet, uh, older lady, former uh, uh, police officer, actually. So she's got a lot of great stories. Ke- Kepler's first uh, female police officer, actually. Um, and, and so she's got a lot of great stories about her time on the force, which Duck likes to hear. And he likes to... Uh, she she likes to think that she's checking up on him to make sure that he's doing okay because she still hasn't lost the sort of protective nature that she developed over 40 years in the force. Uh, but I think they kind of look out for each other. Damn, dude, we were just goofing. That's good shit. That is real good shit. Um, okay, uh, so you're behind. Wait, the, hold uh, on. So, so, who else is in the building? <laughs> I'll, I can tell you if you want. There's Mr. There's Mr. Furley. Tur- Mr. Furley's there. No, Mr. Tarkeesian, who runs the general store in town. Uh, and Justin, I have a he, fucking character list here in Scrivener, and have to, I'm having to update it. Mr. <laughs> Turkesian? Yeah, Mr. Turkesian. All right. Runs the grocery store. General store. Yeah, I mean, it's a grocery store, general store, whatever. It, sa- it says Kepler General Store, but that's sort of like a nod to nostalgia. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a grocery store. A small one. You find those in small West Virginia towns where the big chains have not come in still. Like, yeah. um, if you go to a place like MacDow County, you'll find these, like, gas stations that are kind of like markets. And bait. Combination and gas station markets. Combination bait shop. A lot of the time. Um, yeah, at a bait shop, th- for sure. There is a Pizza Hut in town. That is, I think, one yeah. of the few chains. That's uh, canon. Yeah. A Pizza Hut is not necessarily a grocery store, but I can see sure. how if your only groceries were pizza. <laughs> can you give me all the ingredients but not cooked, please? Um, all right. Is there anybody else in your apartment building? Uh, in the, in, no. The other two, the other, the fourth apartment is unoccupied. Okay. Currently. You know, you, you, that's the problem with an area like this. Somebody moves out. It's not like we have an influx sure. of people, you know. Okay. Um. All right. So it's somewhere close to the end of the two month span, like very, very close. I think like a week before the events of of this arc. Um. And you are you're behind the the, the apartment building. It's six thirteen. Uh. Sure enough, nobody's out there. Uh. And Mr. Arkeesian still work. Yeah. Mr. Arkeesian still but, work. Mrs. Pearson's uh hold up for the evening. Watching the wheel. Uh, she watches the news. She's six to six thirty. She's watching, watching the, news. the news, so you know that you're clear. And uh, your watch rolls over to 614. And then, like, without a sound, there's no, like, like, there's Minerva. And she is standing in front of you. And she says, Duck Newton, let's be swift, eh? Only a few moments. Are you ready to begin your training? All right. Here's the first thing I want to show you. Check this out. And he jumps up in the air and kicks. And he's, he says, I... Is that anything? Because I I, <laughs> I did it, and it felt like I did it, and I felt like it was something, but I don't know if that's anything. Well, why don't you try to do it's kind of like a half kick? Yes, I kind of jump up and do like a half kick. It's a it looked rad, and it might scare your opponent into maybe wavering for a moment, giving you an opportunity to strike them with your blade. But you've just taken up like one of our three minutes with it, so I think keep keep practicing and um, let's see how it goes. Um, All right, let's. Uh, why don't you roll to kick some ass? I think that'd be a cool way to like see how yeah. well you do with this training session. Uh, it is really hard. I have my dice like in my hand. It's very hard to break the habit, but I will use your digital, your rigged game. That oh, all you were I you were saying? Eleven points uh, to to kick this ghost's ass. Um, <laughs> and, uh, actually, you add your what is it? Bo- body. I'm What's looking tough. Uh, bu- 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 yeah, add tough, which he is one. So that's a twelve. All right, I think I think this is great because I think after like a few weeks of her, and I think the training is like you take turns her you swinging your blade at her, uh, just trying to hit her uh, while she mm-hmm. kind of dodges out of the way, and then she has like uh, she has a blade of her own uh, wherever she is that you can sort of see in the projection that she swings at you, and she and I feel like because of the net magical nature of my blade, like we could like fight that way like i i feel like i could have like a real even though she's spectral right like so here's the th- here's the, the thing you are right you have your blade is magic but like you have hit her before it just passes right through her because and and i meant the sword herself like i don't think it hurts her but like 
I feel like her sword maybe we could like bounce off or she she like uh, here's how just here, like here's light. how we rectify it. I think it's okay. it you feel something when it hits her, but you it's not like in your hand, right? It's like your your right. it's like your brain telling you like that's a hit. But you don't it's Probably not like hit. it's not like the blade is stopped in the air. Um but okay. that has been sort of rare for you to actually get a hit off on her. And I think this time you uh you you stab at her and she dodges out of the way and you quickly like swing the blade upwards and you 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 get a hit on her and even though again like she's not tangible uh i think she falls down um uh and and this is like quick this happens in like the span of a second and she's laughing as she goes uh and she says oh duck newton you have been practicing i see you're really giving in to the instincts yeah i i've been feeling like i've been getting a little bit better you know i'm trying to put in my time and 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 uh polish up a little bit she says, your, your skills are impressive, Duck Newton, more, more impressive than I expected them to get. There is a certain amount of, uh, let's call it help that you receive just for being the chosen one. But it seems like you've supplemented that yourself with, uh, with uh, doing a little, what did, you, what did you call it, CrossFit? Yeah, I'm still doing CrossFit. Uh, it, it was, it, I went back um, and... Uh, I, you know, I'm not getting there every week, but I feel like because of magic, that's probably fine. And destiny, you know? She says, no, you're, again, the instinct that you received upon becoming the chosen one will do you well. There's no need to overexert yourself. Doc, we only have a few moments. How is it going with Beacon? Are you two getting along? <sighs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. You don't, just so I'm clear... You don't have any other, like, magical weapons stashed somewhere or anything, do you? I mean, it's going fine. But, like, you don't... That I'm pretty locked in, I assume. She laughs and says, Duck, there's no way for me to get you another weapon. That's the only one of its kind on... And then she's gone. And then I think that night you're in bed and you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself. You got some good hits off. Um, why don't you mark experience? That's not typically how this works, but I think I think you did a a, a great job training uh, your 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 bod and your skills, um, and so I think this would reflect that. We have to assume uh, we could say that that's probably an assumption of like since we had a lapse of time, there's probably a lot of failures in in that time yes, period. Exactly that reflected Mark, by that. Mark that eighty four p- experience. <laughs> so we're not playing complete Calvin ball. Yeah, sure. We're we're making up for for lost fails. Um, I think also because. Y'all just didn't get very much experience that first arc. I mean, you probably failed a lot and didn't tell me, but didn't roll a lot. Yeah, either that, we're gonna roll true. more. I feel definitely. Like. Um, I think that night you're in bed and you are asleep, and you you, uh, and this has happened to you before. Like you feel it coming on, even though you're unconscious. And what what does it look like? What do your visions look like? Do you know this is gonna sound like a weird touchstone, but you ever see like rotoscoping? It's where they animate yeah, sure. over real people. Um, it's like that, but like a, a little more monochromatic, like a lot of hues of like uh, sapphire and green. I like and stuff that like a that. lot. But um, that's what they look like. I think you just see water, and I think you see. Um, no, you don't really see any shapes in the water. I think your your vision is a little bit too primitive for that. Um, but you you see this water and it's dark wherever this water is, and then you see your body. Uh, it's sort of like superimposed in this scene in that style, uh, and you are face up and you are uh, sort of you you look unconscious and you are falling in this water. Mm. Ned. Hmm. Ned, what you been up to? Um, I think just to set it up because of the events of the 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 uh the end of the first arc, and I'm not sure if it was clear what happened there, but the video that Kirby posted was not your Wookiee costume, you like wandering through the woods. It was the camera still rolling, recording actually Barclay, actually Bigfoot, actually fighting a big monster bobcat that was infected with the monster fluid that made it real big. But because um, because of Ned's crummy camera work, there's still some doubt. Yeah, it, it is still like the most one of the most convincing pieces of Bigfoot footage that exists out there. And that is why the Cryptonomica has been 
doing pretty well lately. Yeah. Um, you have not stri- you, you you paid back the the missing uh, payments for your your lease or mortgage or whatever, uh, and you are you're doing all right. Not like rich, 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 but like you are finally like making enough money to get by, which is uh, it's probably been a, a long time since the cryptonomic has been like that. So, what have the last two months looked like for you? Uh, they've been pretty good. Uh, for for Ned, um, he he, um, he took all that extra money and bought some drones, and uh, he <laughs> sure what? Yeah, he bought yeah, he bought he bought some drones, and he's been cooking up a uh, a Mothman scam with uh, with Kirby. They had okay. so much success with the uh, the Bigfoot video that he he bought a couple of drones. So that's kind of been percolating on the. On the back is the Mothman uh, the big scam thing. you're doing just to figure it out. Like you have some sort of paper cutout of a Mothman that you attach to the drone and just fly it around oh, the town, oh, or so much, so much more elaborate than that. It's using a series of lights and phosphorescence and uh, <laughs> okay. lasers. There's there's some there's some lasers involved that we haven't so, really put that in effect. That's that's been kind just of to clarify. The burner Ned was before. super behind <laughs> on his rent, about to lose. The shop, and he gets all this money. He's like, "Cool, finally drones." <laughs> yeah, bought drones. Okay. Yeah, well, paid off the rent. Oh, you okay. know, but you know, m- money means nothing to to Ned. He has no concept of it. How is it? How's um, it? The, how's it different now? Doing the the Cryptonomica stuff while you actually have like like a pretty frequent stream of visitors. I think it's mostly like hikers who are like maybe doing the trail or a lot of, a lot of folks doing the trail. A lot of folks have been uh, coming into town. It's actually the success of the video has, has been kind of decent for the town in general. Okay. Um, you know, because people have been staying at local uh, hotels and eating in the pizza hut. So, you know, it's been kind of a boon for Kepler. It's still not up there with, Places like Canaan Valley and stuff. Like sure, that. but it's um, you know it's it's helped out. Has there been any friction with you and uh, the uh, specifically Barclay, I guess, at Amnesty Lodge for um, the, the fact that you put them put him on blast, kind of? Yeah, and and not only that, but I it's I don't think they're too happy. About I'm, it. I think there's. Some, I'm gonna say maybe maybe Aubrey has done a little bit of damage control. For Ned to be like, he's all he didn't know. He didn't know. Yeah. It's an accident. I, think, I I I don't think it was like a huge blow up, but I think Barclay was like, What the fuck, dude? <laughs> this is like specifically not what we're going for here. Um so I wanna do a scene with you, Ned, and I want it to be like now. I, I would like your your catch up scene to be like kind of now, uh, right as we're getting into the start of the arc. Um, but what 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 could we do? Well, I have an idea. Um, one of the projects that Kirby and I've been working on is trying to get a uh, the local TV station. See, you know, because we're in the National Radio Quiet Zone, you know, there's like no satellite TV yeah. and no cable. But we do have a local TV station that basically is all you have in, in Kepler, um, WKWV. And they, um, they have agreed to let me do a... Uh, a late night monster movie show like the old chiller theaters <laughs> right there at the cryptonomica we're gonna we're gonna shoot it right there and kirby's gone out and gotten them these cameras and so we're we're putting it on saturday nights uh we're gonna uh, call it saturday night dead up against saturday night live and we're just gonna show scary monster movies like uh roger corman and and you know all those old great drive-in movies uh every saturday night and we're getting ready for the first uh, broadcast. We're getting ready for the first one. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's do this at the Cryptonomica. It's the 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 uh, day. It's like the morning uh, the before your first broadcast, and you're talking with Kirby about what you are going to do that night. Okay. Can we just to get a little bit more interplay? Can we also say like because I think that this would be an idea that Aubrey would be the showmanship and the thing. She's not in the scene, but maybe she's like in the background setting stuff up. You know, she's also there. Um, yeah, this is, I mean, this is at the crypt. Is it shot at the Cryptonomica or is it shot at the TV yeah, station? Yeah, no, no, shot at the Cryptonomica. Uh, all right, I think there's probably some production people there then setting up some some stuff, setting up some lights. I think they're sort of having to move around. There's probably like four or five people there uh, at the Cryptonomica 
uh, just like checking out the exhibits. They want to see the Bigfoot video. You have like a display with the extended cut of the Bigfoot video going, which I think Barclay was kind of uncomfortable about, but it's bringing in the big bucks. Um, and uh, you're getting set up. Um, and Kirby, Kirby looks really nervous. He's like, um, I don't, uh, Ned, I know this thing's happening tonight. I don't know. Uh, I, I'm not much for like uh, public speaking or being in front of the camera. So like, oh, no, no, no. Do worry not friend Kirby, because you're not going to be on camera. This oh, is Ned's God. time. This is all about me. Ned. Um, Man. I am the host. Well, what Maybe you want the candelabras? The magic candelabras or the regular candelabras? <laughs> the I don't know what you mean. They're all regular candelabras. Well, yeah, but I mean, I thought we talked about the gag where you're going to shoot fire out of your fingers. Okay, I'll just put them somewhere. <laughs> shoot fire out of okay. her fingers? What are you talking about? A, a stage magician. She's a stage Oh, magician. yeah, that's right. Um, I thought it would add to the pizzazz of the show. Yeah, for sure. Um, that was uh, what you just saw there was some really dope, like, Hey, Dad fucked up because now I'm gonna burn him. That was Griffin, and then Griffin was like, "Here's a burn," and then Dad was like, "Actually, twist. I got an answer ready for you." And Griffin's like, "Oh shit, <laughs> yep. I've been reversed." And the burn. burner become the Bernie. Kirby says, um, "So uh, what? What flick you got uh, on the on the docket for tonight?" Ah, great one to start with. Uh, it's called Beast with a Million Eyes. Um, it's uh, 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 Roger Corman directed it, 1955, uh, starring the brilliant Paul Birch, and of course the second Darren from Bewitched, Dick Sargent. So uh, it's got an all-star cast. It's about this family, and they're on a date farm, and aliens show up. It's it's really a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> people are gonna love it. People are absolutely going to love it. He says, yeah, it sounds like, I, I think it's a good idea. I think it's going to bring in business. Uh, but I got to tell you, Ned, I'm, I'm a little bit worried because uh, we've been doing pretty well here for a bit. But um, the thing about Bigfoot, folks get kind of tired of these you know, sightings after a little bit. You got to keep it fresh. So I don't know if we need sure. to move forward with Operation Mothman or something. But I'm, I'm, I, I'm telling you because I see this at the lamplighter all the time. We get a big scoop on a cryptid in town and people pay attention but just for a little bit so we need to we need to do something if we're going to keep this keep this momentum oh, going oh listen the mothman plan we we definitely do this this is just publicity friend kirby this is just getting our brand getting our name out there i figured whatever we do with the mothman we kind of start unveiling it on the show Man. i like that oh we have exclusive yes yes aubrey do you dear. have more cobwebs yes uh look over there behind the vat that has the f f a giant floating brain in it the fake brain Got it. thank you um, I think in the middle of this sort of chaotic scene, uh, the the bell above the door rings, and in walks a, a a young man. You've lived here for a while. You probably it's not a huge town. Uh, you recognize him as Calvin Owens, the captain of the local high school swim team, uh, and he looks he looks actually pretty sh shaken up. He sort of stops when he sees sort of the, the lights being put up and the decorations being put up. Um, but he kind of shakes his head and he walks towards you and he says, Hey, are you, um, you run this place, right? This like this monster museum. Absolutely. Welcome to the cryptonomica. When you stepped through that door, you stepped through the arch of doom. Here there be monsters, my friend. And what's your name? I, I think whenever you deliver this spiel to people, they usually look kind of delighted. He looks like scared. Um, uh, he, do, you, do you know Calvin or not? I don't know like how deep Ned's roots in this town. Not by name. Okay. I, I mean, he's a pretty big, pretty big jock. Yeah, sure. Around he town. He says, uh, uh, my name's uh, Calvin. I, uh, I've, I've been in town for a while. I've never been in here, though. But um, I, I know that y'all know stuff about uh, monsters and what do you what do you call them cryptids here in town cryptids yes yes so like what do you do what do you do what do you do um well we uh, investigate uh, there there are a lot of monsters a lot of cryptids we call them bomb bombs we have a lot of bomb bombs running Ned. through the woods here in Kepler is, yes Aubrey. is bomb bombs catching on uh only with me okay i'm the only one apparently calvin kind of puts his 
uh, his he does the Adventure Zone NPC uh, symbol where he like pinches his the bridge of his nose and kind of closes his eyes and he looks up at you and he says, "Um, this is the only place I could think to come to because you all know about monsters and stuff." And so, well, uh, I got a new one for you. So hey, if if you're not familiar, which you should be if you listened last week, but maybe you didn't because that wasn't like a a, a a canonical Adventure Zone episode. Everything we said in there was bullshit. No, it was, it was all it bullshit. Was real. <laughs> no, I just mean it wasn't like a narrative episode. Mm-hmm. I don't give a shit. Anyway, Max Fun Drive is here. It only happens once a year, Vern. Uh, um, and we uh, come to you, sort of hat in hand, and say, "Hey, did you like the the show?" And then you say, yeah, I did. And we we're like, well, could we have some money for it, uh, for, for doing that, and the show, uh, good for you? And you say, well, I, yeah, absolutely. Let me do that right this second. So uh, you go to max fund, maximumfund.org forward slash donate, and you pick a donation level that works for you. Um, and again, I, this is a precursor. We say this all the time, but if it's uncomfortable for you or you know you can't, make it happen we understand uh uh you, you know it's a decision you gotta make for yourself and we don't want anybody to be put out uh but if, if you can spare it it sure helps um we have different uh donation levels you can give if you give just five dollars a month like if you can carve out just five bucks a month uh, you uh, are going to support the the network which is really what you're doing with these you're not like buying stuff you're 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 supporting the shows that you like and and um, your money does go directly to the shows that you say you listen to. That's that's how the system works. So you're supporting us and the other Max Fun shows you enjoy directly. Um, but if you can kick in five bucks a month, you are uh, gonna get. Wait, what are you doing? This is, dad, this is Dad's great. This is like oh, Dad's sorry. like main. Dad, walk us through the gifts, Dad. Well, you, you get exclusive to bonus the voice. content. That's do yeah. the voice. And for ten dollars well, a month, you didn't you, do five dollars a month. What do you get for five dollars a month? Do five dollars a month first, Daddy. You get exclusive bonus content. How much? Yeah, uh, I don't have that on the sheet in front of me. <laughs> just, it's, just, like, it's like over 120 hours. Over 120 fun. hours. That's right. 120 hours all for you. $10 a month. You got well, it. The, whole, you, uh, the 120 hours is for all the shows throughout the network. Uh, all the shows throughout the network. They're all there at your very fingertips. What did we do? Can you talk about what we did this this year for the uh, Max Fun Drive? Because it's very This good. year, we did uh, the Adventure Zone uh, Elementary. And holy cow, did we have a great time pretending to be detectives and vampires? <laughs> what about if I? What if I can spare a little bit more cash, Dad, and I can kick in ten bucks a month? Ten we- bucks a month? Wow! Well, I tell you what, if you're a Taz Amnesty fan, you're really going to dig that because we've got those beautiful enameled pins. That's right, enameled pins, and the uh, the Adventure Zones enamel pin is. Dr. Harris Bonkers. Check it out. Dr. Harris Bonkers. You love him. You know him. There's a little flame on him. It's really cute. Now, $20 a month, you get everything from five and you get everything from 10, but you get the Max Fun Family Cookbook. I'm telling you, this thing has recipes, everything from cocktails to desserts, everything in between, uh, featuring recipes that, well, I believe we've contributed to, haven't we, fellas? Yeah. Great. Okay. $35 a month, you get a carafe. I know. you. It's perfect for... <laughs> <laughs> putting uh, putting juice in. It's perfect uh, for any kind of fluids that are consumable. Not lava. Now, Daddy, Don't put lava in well, it. Daddy, what's the difference no. between a carafe and a carafe? Don't dunk uh, on our dad. He's doing his best. Long A, short A, my young friend. It's got a Max Fun Rocket logo on it. Now, get this. For $50 well, okay, a month. We don't month. have to do no, all the levels. Let's stop there. Uh, oh, I love this one. Uh, I never get to do 50 I know, but th- we don't ask you. Just whatever. It's a you- surprise. you got to go to MaximumFun.org first slash donate to check it out. And please do that right now. Um, we, uh, You know, a lot of times you think, oh, I'll, I'm definitely going to get to it. But, you know, you might forget the drive only goes for a couple more days. So, if if you would, if you enjoy our show, if you can spare some some bucks, um, it really does mean a lot to us. It's allowed Dad to stop waking up at three o'clock in the morning to go work at the radio station. I still do to pee. 
<laughs> Crazy. He drives to the radio uh, station. It's you, the only bathroom he feels comfortable if in. If we hit the 25,000 new and upgrading donor goal, our dad will stop peeing. <laughs> Forever. Forever. Well, Forever. okay. Uh, it's it's and it's allowed us the flexibility to make stuff like this because of the the drive and because of your support. We just we can justify spending the time to make the adventure zone, which, as Griffin will attest, is it's a huge time investment. But we make it because people really like it, and and you've shown that with your support. So, um, uh, please can continue to show that support at maximumfund.org forward slash donate. Uh, again, we only do this once a year, but we're able to do that because y'all really come out and uh, uh, do do a, a great show of support every year for us, and, and we really appreciate it. So please take a second right now. Go to MaximumFun.org forward slash donate. Get get yourself a, a cool pin, a cookbook, a carafe, carafe, whatever you want, either one. You have to and, choose uh, between the carafe and carafe. There's like a yeah, slider. Yeah, there's two different options there. And at some uh, levels, the carafe. There's a yes. carafe if you donate a lot of money. Anyway, uh, please do that right now, MaximumFun.org forward slash donate so the three of you have reconvened at amnesty lodge with calvin in tow uh the lobby here is is fairly quiet there's just a few guests loitering about not guests but residents i guess uh loitering about they're all in their human disguise sort of given their uncertainty about the the outsider that has come in with you uh and calvin still seems pretty shaky as uh barclay enters from the kitchen and uh hands the four of you each a cup of some strong smelling cinnamon tea um and after taking a sip of his tea, Calvin says, so, uh, I don't really know what y'all's story is, but look, I'm not a big believer in all the monster stuff that some folks in this town are always talking about. Sorry, Ned, but I know what I saw last night. What did you see? I, I saw the pool that I've swum in every day. Swum? Swam. Have swam, swim? S- swim, have swam in. I mean, I'm the captain of the pool team. You'd think I would know the past tense. Say, did laps. Yeah, the did pool laps. I did laps in last night. It came, it came alive. I, 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 I don't know how to describe it because it's water, and I've never seen water do that. But yeah. I, I gotta know. Was that real? Do monsters really exist here? And and when he says that, I, I think Barclay like kind of locks eyes with with uh, probably with Ned because he knows that Ned is the biggest sort of loudmouth in this department uh, and is making a face at you like, dude, don't do it. You know, um, Calvin was it? Yeah. I, no, listen. Power of suggestion is very strong, but there's no such things as monsters. You don't have to worry about it. Um, why don't you roll to investigate a mystery? That is plus sharp. Ooh, so it's a seven? Okay, on a seven, nine, hold one, you get to ask uh, one of the following questions. What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? And what is being concealed here? Did he see where it went? Probably not. I think, I, I, so here's how this is going to work because you're just having a conversation and this is for like hard details. I think he's going to tell you like what he saw. Okay. But if you want, if you want actual, again, remember, and if you, if this is maybe the first episode of Amnesty you're listening to, the big thing for this game is gathering like hard intel on the monster that you are hunting uh, that you are going to have to use in battle because the the odds are usually stacked pretty heavily in the favor of the monsters. Uh, the only way to get an upper hand is to sort of gather intel and act on it. So I think he's going to tell you what he saw. Okay. But if you want if you want something useful here, it's going to be the result of one of these questions. Okay, so I'll hold on to the um, question and ask you when I need it. Also, because okay. I'm a spell slinger, I have... Um, the I have forensic divination, so when I successfully investigate a mystery, I also get to ask the question, what magic was done here as a free extra question? That might be something that's better directed towards, like, Barclay. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it, so the other thing about this is that the information can only come in the context of, like, what you're getting it from or who you're asking. Yeah. And so, like, Calvin's not a fucking wizard. Um, or is he? <gasps> 
No, he's not. Um, yes. So I don't know how much. So, uh, I, yeah, I think that's a good impulse. He'll sort of tell you what happened, and then you can ask one of these questions for some hard intel, keeping in mind that, like, he only knows what he saw. So he says, all right, last night I snuck in in the Kepler High pool, and I was doing some laps. We got the big meat coming up pretty soon. I was trying to get big um, meat. <laughs> all right. I was trying to get, you know, tore, ripped, all tore up um, in my, you know, swimming muscles. And uh, I don't know, it was late. It was real dark. And I don't want to brag, but I'm a pretty fucking good swimmer. But I, something grabbed me, pulled me under. And I was under for a while. I was struggling under there for a bit. And I, I managed to break free of whatever had me. And... You know, I had my eyes open down there. I didn't see nothing grabbing me, but I, I, I managed to get away. I swam, ran, got up, a, got a, got up towards the window. I snuck in through. And I was just about to hop out when I looked behind me, and y'all, I swear to God, the water, of the pool started to lift up, like make a hill in the middle of the pool. Um, and uh, when I sort of locked eyes with it, it didn't have eyes. When I looked over at it, it started to move over towards me, and then I, I made my my flight and, and got the out. The mound of water, you're saying the mound of water rose up and actually moved. That's what I saw. And Calvin, just, what did it seem like it was going to do? Did it, I mean, it pulled you under the water, but it seemed like it was intent on, on hurting you. Yeah. Is this your question? What was it going to do? Yeah. Um, he says, um, I, <laughs> I don't know, but it was moving towards me there at the end, and it tried to drown me. I think it was going to try and kill me. I, 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 I didn't, you know, talk to it. Um, Calvin, would you excuse me for just one second? And uh, uh, yeah, cross over to Barclay. Hey, um, I don't know how this usually works, but does this sound like anything you recognize? Any kind of... I don't know, creature, spell? Is that a thing? He uh, he kind of walks you over to, uh, like, away from the place a little bit. I think he's a little nervous about having this conversation anywhere near Calvin. Um, and he says, I'm going to, uh, I, I we can wait till afterwards, but upon seeing this, like, I start talking to Calvin as well. I have some stuff I want to say to Calvin. So okay, well, that is happening concurrently to alleviate any uh, concern of Calvin overhearing oh. overhearing what they're talking about. Okay. Uh Barclay says I mean uh, some sort of like unnatural thing trying to kill somebody. It's it's definitely an abomination. It's just like it's like a couple days early. Aubrey. it shouldn't it shouldn't be here yet. We uh, we still have a couple days before it was supposed to show up. They they've been acting a little more erratic and unpredictable. Over the last year or so, they've they've abided by certain rules for decades, but now they're starting to bend them. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure this is that's our mark. Calvin, uh, let me bend your ear for a second. Yeah, uh, y y you know me, and you know uh, we've known each other a long time. I I went to school with uh, with, with your dad actually. Um, so we, we 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 you know that we're not sort of crime fighters or police officers or anything. I know the uniform can be a bit misleading, but what we do do is, you, you know, you asked about us. We're kind of enthusiasts uh, uh, into this sort of cryptozoological world. You know, weird stuff happens here in Kepler and because uh, Ned's got his sort of interests and Audrey's got hers and I, 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 you know, I'm interested in like creatures and stuff and Audrey's interested in magic and Ned likes to keep track of like the, how people make up monsters and stuff. They call them cryptids. I'm not but... making this up. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I know. I know. No, no, no. I, I understand. What I'm telling you is we have weird stuff happens in Kepler, right? Like that won't come as a surprise to you. We all know it. And uh, but but sometimes people who have ill intentions like to use that to try to cover up whatever, you know, dark stuff they want to get up to. So because we know about the, the sort of cryptozoological stuff, and we're interested in it. Sometimes we like to just help out and poke around, poke a few holes uh, and make it a little bit easier for the real heroes, you know, to kind of do their do their job. 
uh, and and because usually the you, you know you start to see it unravel pretty quickly once we start poking around. You know, it's somebody's using a, a a shop vac, you know, to make stuff move or whatever. You know, people got all kinds of tricks. So I think, but um, I, I think what would be cool here is if we did a roll. There's manipulate someone, and I think we can do this uh, once you have given them a reason. Tell them what you want them to do, and roll plus charm. I think what you're doing is trying to like assuage his fears, so he's not going to like poke poke into like what you all are doing yes uh, exactly. and the, the reason you're giving them is is that you know it's all it's all good here there's no there's no monsters we were i'm team also sort trying of to like lay down a cover yeah for sure he can he can tell other people in case you know um he so needs to i think role plus charm and i think the stakes here are calvin's sort of continued interference into this thing okay role plus charm Aha, nine plus one. That's a 10. Uh, okay, then they do it. Consider yourself manipulated. Uh, they Calvin. do it for the reason you give them. Um, I think he, I think he just looks relieved, and he's like, all right, yeah, I, I was starting to think that it was a little silly. I, 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 I don't know, maybe the Jets kicked on too hard, and there were, I, it, it would make me feel a lot better if y'all would go, go, you know, look, look around, but i I, I don't know. You seem like you're not full of shit on this, so I'll, I'll, I guess I'll drop it. Uh, and he looks. I think he looks for the first time since like you all have been talking to him. He looks like he's calmed down. And and listen, you don't need to go. Don't. We'll pass this all along to the the Zeke and the boys over at the uh, the sheriff's it's office. Fucking, Let us poke around into it, and getting... we'll uh, and and we'll just we'll poke some holes in this whole you know water thing and find out what's really going on here. And you know how those guys don't like to lift a finger, so we'll kind of wrap it up in a nice little bow for them. And uh, drop it off at their office. I'm, my metaphors got away from me. Yeah, a little bit. You know what I'm saying. Mr. Keeper, are any of the uh, accumulated uh, residents of Sylvain there have a medical background? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think, I, I mean, it, there's there's werewolves and vampires and a ghost. Um, and so they have like magical backgrounds, but no like medical ones. Well, I just wondered if it would behoove us to take a look at Calvin's ankle where he was grabbed. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I well, mean, I mean, it was the only physical contact that. Yeah, and obviously none of us are going to have the expertise to like have any derive Bar- anything from it. But Bark Barkley might. Barkley yeah. might. Uh, Barclay. Not. Uh, it's not Charles Barkley. He shows up in Arc Four. Or, um, oh, I was thinking it was. <laughs> I was thinking Barkley from the. Uh, from Sesame Street. How, but okay. Why don't we? Uh, why don't you roll to investigate? Like you could just do it, right? And and that way we all sort of get a hand on the on the ball in this scene. Okay. Um, eight plus what? Uh, sharp. sharp. Yeah. Then that's a ten. Is it? You have plus two sharp. Wow. Yep. Uh, okay. On a ten, uh, hold two. So you get to ask two questions, and I think we sort of resolve this this thing here uh, with maybe. Um, what can it do, or what happened here? Uh, what happened here, or something like that? Uh, listen, Calvin. I know it sounds a little weird, but uh, I am quite an aquatic uh, fan myself. <laughs> like a um, swim, a swim fan. fan, you might say. I'm a swim fan. Wait, no. Um, <laughs> I'm going fan. to. I, I'm going to murder you. <laughs> I have a Michael Phelps poster in the Cryptonomica in the back, 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 back room. Um, but uh, could I? Maybe take a peek at uh, at your your ankles. You know, a lot of power derives from hey, the kid. Hey, Dad, I just want to say thank you for making this as creepy as you possibly could <laughs> yeah, in like sure. thirty seconds. I really appreciate it. I, I think you've been. I think you've seen him sort of walk, uh, favoring one of his legs, um, and sort of put it together like that. And he says, uh, "Yes," and he uh, he rolls up his his pant leg and props it up on the table and you look at his ankle and there is like a, a, a mark there. It's not like a, a hand print or anything like that. Um, it's just kind of, it's just kind of uh, just sort of a red uh, area, I guess is the only way to describe it uh, that wraps around his, his whole ankle. And I think what you sort of glean from that is like, he was not necessarily grabbed by a, by a, a hand necessarily. Uh, my second question is, you you said you opened your eyes and you looked when you were under the water. Now I realize you probably didn't see much, but did you see anything at all? I know chlorine, <laughs> I know, kills me too. But did you see anything in the water at all? Is this what sort of creature is it? Okay, I guess it's what happened here. I want to know what he saw. 
if he saw anything. Yeah, I think it's it's one of those two. This is your, this is the second question, so I guess it's six and one half dozen the other. He says, um, I uh, I didn't have my goggles on. Unfortunately, I was taking a little breather when it grabbed me, but um, I don't know, Ned. It was pretty dark and it was underwater. I didn't have my goggles on, and I'll, I'll tell you what though. There's some moonlight coming in. Moon was real bright that night. And and so, like, that that was sort of what I was swimming by. But when I was under there, I feel like I saw, like, a different light. Like, not moonlight. It was kind of... I saw it for, like, a, a millisecond. But, so this ain't gospel, but it was, like, yellow light under there. Like, um, I thought, like I, bio I thought maybe they'd change. luminescence? Phosphorescent? No, no, just like a... Not like a, you know, there wasn't no, I wasn't grabbed by an electric heel or anything like that. It was just, I thought somebody had changed the pool lights out and put in some, some different bulbs or something, but, uh, the bulb, the, the lights were out, it, but there was some sort of yellow light under there. I don't know. That's what, that's, that's what I saw. Damn you, Sinestro. That's such a dorky joke. I love uh, it. I know. <laughs> and I think with that, uh, I think Calvin, uh, says, uh, so y'all are going to look into this, right? I feel a lot better just knowing that, like, some, the meat's coming up in four days. I don't want folks, you know, getting getting pulled under or killed by some sort of living pool or something while 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 the competition's taking place. So if y'all would look into it, it would really help me sleep a bit better tonight. Right, yeah, absolutely. The chicaners will be on the case. And now I'm still not sure about that one. Um... Uh... The chicaners. Nah, it's just us three people gonna go check it out. Yeah, we're the chicaners. We right? don't even really have a team name, Calvin. <laughs> well, but chicaners it would well, be cool. I, the chicaners or get them on a ja- get them people. get them on a jacket. Well, the, the, I, I three chicaners, have, the three chicaners. The three chicaners. I already have a jacket. And well, we may you know. add other people, or one of us might beef it. So we don't want to hang our hat on well, the number of people. And also, we for, are just for, three regular people who look. Yeah, but for spring, you know, something lighter interest. like a windbreaker kind of I thing. Got, got that too. The the forestry department issues oh. that to me, so I'm kind of covered on the jacket front. Pretty much any d- thickness or oh. lining, I'm hoodies? pretty well covered. Hoodies, maybe hoodies. hoodies? I'm not a fan of because oh. of the hat, you see. Ah, right. Yeah. yeah. So oh, maybe oh. for right now, we're just going to go with three three people, people who are looking into it. Calvin, into thanks it. so much. I'm assuming you've left. <laughs> <laughs> room at this point. Uh, real quick, you mentioned jackets, and uh, I think you all have received a pine guard patch. Not make the jackets. No, canonical. I know, but the jackets. You all have a pine guard patch at this point that uh, you're supposed to sort of uh, fasten to the inside of your jacket. Does it have to be inside? Yes, it's like a secret thing. You don't want to go around saying I'm a part of a team of monster hunters. I think maybe if you put it on the outside the first time, like Barclay saw you, he was like, "What do you know? Inside goes inside for secrets." Ducks, ducks is in his wallet because he doesn't know how to sew. Okay, and I will say That's Aubrey's just like safety pinned hers into the inside of her uh, her vest. Love it. I've uh, got mine in a. Uh, I'm gonna get a tattoo of it. That's <laughs> okay. Do you have it on your person also, in addition to your tattoo? And also, you don't have it yet, but you're gonna get around to it. Yeah, I've got it, but it's been really busy. Yeah, the sure. Um, okay. Yeah, I think Calvin, uh, after this great dialogue, uh, stands up and he says, "All right, uh, I got to head out. Actually, it's my brother's birthday, and I'm I actually snuck out of the house to come here as is. But um, maybe we can circle back. Tell us about your brother. The... He's a he's a doofus. But um, maybe we can circle back before the swim meet, and I can find out what y'all found out." Tell me Calvin's last name is Hobbs. Uh, it's Owens. Crap. Owens. Named after listener, Calvin Owens. Thank you for tweeting about the show. He asks if you can circle back up before the meet. Yes. Uh, it's a problem when we, uh, any one of the three of us can answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's got <kinda, laughs> in this weird, like, well, I know if I say it now. It's like this Matthew do where, like, with each second that passes, the likelihood of someone else answering becomes higher. So you don't want to like step on anybody. So we just <laughs> fall into a, a circle of of not being able to answer. Yes, we will. No problem. Uh, and Calvin stands up and uh, leaves the leaves Amnesty Lodge. Um, and with that, I think Barclay walks over to the seat he was sitting in and sits down. And he says, 
All right. Uh, I guess it's a. I guess it's a work day. We um, should probably start our investigation. If this thing showed up, we can assume the clock starts then. We got, you know, we got we got about a week before it's able to to leave Kepler, and so we need to find out what it is and take it down before it does. So, I gotta I gotta stay here because I could you make us some lunches? Yeah, of course I make you some lunches. That's my Sick. that's my jam. But you know, mom ain't back yet, and so I gotta you know hold down the fort here. Are you three good to? I know you, I don't know how well you've been keeping up with your your practice and stuff, Fabri. I know you've been going out back, and we've been shooting some fire at some shit. But y'all y'all feel all right about tackling this one on your own? Sure. Go to a swimming pool. Yeah. I just got one question. Um, uh, one of my partners has a real heavy stick that he clobbers stuff with. I got a sword, and my other partner shoots fire out of her hands how the hell do we fight water duck i uh, i don't know that's the that's the job one of the one of the tricky things about this gig is we don't get repeats there's not a lot of uh sort of institutional knowledge that comes into play here i've never seen a water monster come through so you're gonna have to figure that out on your own but i think a a good place to start is maybe heading to the scene of the attack last night and and seeing what you can find out there obviously be careful you don't want to fight it until we know how to kill it and for god's sake whatever you do don't don't get in the water um but i I think if you you head to the pool and and see what you can see it might be a sort of good place to good launch pad all right um and he he stands up and i think he picks up the uh empty cups of of tea and puts them on a tray and he says and listen I, I appreciate you not telling Calvin the, the truth of the matter, and you gotta keep this stuff secret, Ned. You got it's it is so important. I mean, it's to all of you, but I'm talking to Ned specifically here because he can't seem to, um, you know, shut up about it. It's humans have a long history of freaking the hell out when they find out about Sylvain, and that usually ends with them coming over and causing a a ruckus the night that you three found out that was an anomaly it is of the utmost importance that nobody else gets clued in okay my friend discretion is my middle name i thought your middle name was fucking ned fucking discretion (laughs) chicane that's me junior and i think with that the door to amnesty lodge uh opens and, and shuts and a uh, a man walks in, uh, a tall, sort of handsome, very neatly dressed man walks in. He's wearing a suit um, and kind of eyes the place over and sort of nods at one of the guests with a, a kind of friendly demeanor. And he walks over to the four of you and he introduces himself. He says, I'm looking for Ned Chicane, uh, proprietor of the Cryptonomica. I was, I was told by his associate Kirby I could find him here. Hmm. What uh, what do you need, jolly old Ned, for? Uh, he. I think he sees you, Ned, and just like deduces. Oh, that's Ned. Damn. Mister Chicane, my name is Agent Stern, FBI. At your earliest convenience, sir. I would just love to see your Bigfoot video. So that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, Travis went to go throw up. Travis <laughs> so is very it's... sick. He recorded this episode very sick, and we're all very proud of him. He's an he was able to fight. He was able to fight through it for you, the listener. And what are you going to do for Travis? Well, luckily, you can do something. <laughs> you can go to MaximumFun.org slash donate and really thank Travis for Travis. Yeah, we so we uh, we, we really appreciate all the support that you all have given us, especially during the, the experimental arcs. We we're trying out some new stuff and trying to find our footing for season two. Um, and we, we hope that you enjoy it. And this is a really uh, great time of year to show your support of our show, try to help us meet our goal of 25,000 new and upgrading members. Uh, you can help us get there by going to MaximumFun.org slash donate. And again, you're going to get 
those cool gifts. You're you're going to get uh, the feeling of satisfaction knowing that you have helped keep this keep this show afloat uh, by by supporting it in a very very direct way. Um, yeah, it, it it means the world to us. If, if you have the means, please consider going to to donate at maximumfund.org slash donate and there are a lot of a lot of different levels for you to choose from you know just pick the one that fits for you uh and it's a really easy process too it doesn't it doesn't take much time doesn't take a lot of effort it really is very simple um so that's it for this week we will be back next week with another episode uh that will be april what day is that going to be April 19th will be another episode, and then that'll get us yeah. back on schedule, and then we are going to kick it back to bi-weekly so that I can stop being a so anxious all the time. Uh, <laughs> so, so new episode next week, April 19th, live show this weekend, Friday, uh, Dallas. Yeah. We'll see you real soon. Um, hey, also, uh, this is my mim bam, but Houston... Can you please come to our show, Houston? Yeah, please? McElroyShows.com slash tours. Houston, come, hey, Houston, can you come see the show? Uh... But yeah, we're we'll see you soon and talk to you next week and bye. 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 Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.